I'm Dr. Joe Esposito, and welcome to our podcast, For the Health of It. Remember to subscribe to our podcasts, and I'll help you naturally get well and stay well. The information presented on this program is not intended to take the place of your personal physician's advice, and it is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Discuss this information with your own physician or healthcare provider to determine what is right for you. Are you suffering needlessly? Dr. Joe can give you advice on how to naturally get well and stay well. Dr. Joe Esposito. What we're talking about today are things that happen. I, I said over 50, but as I was putting this together, I really thought it happens over 40 because I see a lot of patients and patients tell me what's going on. So I know what happens in my life personally, but I don't know what happens in Jerry, my cameraman's life or Garrett or Sierra. But what I'm finding is the more patients we, we see, and gosh, we've seen thousands, probably tens of thousands over the years, these similar patterns start to develop. So you're not alone when you have these health issues. Uh, everyone your age, not everyone, people that haven't taken care of themselves at your age are having a lot of these problems. And the nice part is most of them have an answer. And this is why people come to me every day and say, Dr. Joe, aren't you frustrated? Because I see a patient that has whatever, any things we're talking about so far, and we'll talk about it as we up, up come in the show. And they'll say, aren't you frustrated that there's so many people out there that have, their bodies are shrinking, they have incontinence, they lost their libido, they have digestive issues, that the world just doesn't get the answer because they've come in as patients and they know that what we're doing is working. So they say, don't you get frustrated? And I said, you have no clue the level of frustration I deal with on a minute to minute basis when I see people with health issues knowing that there's an answer. And when I watch commercials and I go nuts on that, it's like, folks, come on. Why are you doing all this when the answer is so simple and so easy and the amazing part is so inexpensive? That's why I predict, I'll say it today, within 10 years, chiropractic and holistic healthcare is going to be the primary portal of entry for healthcare. It has to be because we can't keep going, doing what we're doing and, do, and, and having the failures that we have. Now, I'm not against surgery. I'm not against drugs. If I need drugs, if I need surgery, I'm going to be the first one to go get it. I support that 100%. I'm happy with integration integrating the healthcare, but letting the people that know the alternative answers make the first decision. If it doesn't work, and we can't help everybody, most people we do, then we can always go, let's go do a shot, let's go do some medication, let's go do uh, more testing. But the simple, easy answer is, there's a simple, easy answer to these problems in most cases. So these are things that happen to you as you get older. One of the things I teased before we, came, we, went, we went to break is a sleep disorder. If you have a sleep disorder breathing issue, now, as women enter menopause, their estrogen levels drop off, and they may experience unexe un unexpected symptoms like fatigue, daytime sleepiness, unexplained weight gain, chronic neck and shoulder pain, grinding of their teeth. These are signs and symptoms of sleep disordered breathing. It's called SDO. Anything, we, we have a little acronym for everything. Here's what happens when you have sleep disorder uh, issues. Estrogen keeps your muscles of the airways tight, and as the levels drop off, the muscles become looser, just like all the muscles in our body, and the tongue can fall back into the throat, blocking oxygen flow. The brain then has an immediate what's called microarousal. You're in a sleep, but the brain wakes up a little bit and signals the body to correct the oxygen situation. So this little microarousal, like almost kind of sort of waking up, may not be long enough to wake up the person, but just long enough for them to go to a, from a deep sleep into a light, unrefreshed sleep. And when you grind your teeth, it's because your body's compensation is trying, it's, it's trying to open up the airway <clears throat> and increase blood flow. That's going to deliver oxygen to the brain so you don't have the microarousal. So you might also sleep on your side. This can cause a stiff neck or a shoulder problem. So a lot of people, as they get older, I remember my grandmother, she would snore. And she said, when I was young, I never snored. As I'm getting older, I snore. Now, the research we've done, we understand it's because after menopause, the muscles become weaker. It happens to men and women. I mean, as we get older, our muscles aren't as strong as they used to be. That's normal, but you can certainly slow down that process dramatically by making sure your hormones are balanced. So one of the things we can do is a hormone test at our office. We talked about that earlier. And we can test for men and hormone. But a lot of times when people have this sleep, uh, sleep disorders, uh, the, the snoring, the stomach is pushed up against your diaphragm. Now, if you've listened to the show before, you've heard me talk about this probably every show. So as you inhale, your diaphragm drops down and you suck oxygen into the lungs. As you exhale, the diaphragm goes up and pushes air out of the lungs. That's breathing. Your stomach sits right below the diaphragm. There's a little hole in this diaphragm called lower esophageal sphincter. And the stomach, that drops food right into the stomach. And then the sphincter closes, and then you digest food. 
If your stomach is pushed up against your diaphragm, when you're standing up, gravity is pulling down the stomach. Awesome. When you lay down, you don't have gravity anymore. And so what happens is the stomach pushes up against the diaphragm. The diaphragm can't drop down to suck air into the lungs. And as you're sleeping, you're gasping for air. And so in many, 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 many cases, if we can actually adjust or pull the stomach down away from the diaphragm, it's a technique I've taught all the doctors that work with me, pull the stomach away from the diaphragm, your diaphragm is able to move better and you're able to sleep better. So it's not really hard to figure this stuff out. And we've had patients that even work at sleep centers where they, they you know, hook you up to tests and everything and they monitor you overnight and they say, yes, you have a sleep disorder. And then I say, so what did they tell you to do about it? Well, they told me maybe, you know, prop up my bed so I'm sleeping on an angle. Okay, what if we just pull the stomach away from the diaphragm and then from a chiropractic standpoint, open up the nerve supply to the digestive system so the brain can tell the digestive system how to work? Oh, that's a novel idea. Another issue we have is the fourth cervical nerve. The fourth cervical nerve is called the phrenic nerve. And the phrenic nerve comes out of your neck, goes down, your, and controls your diaphragm. So if you have a pinched nerve in your neck, that can affect the phrenic nerve, which can affect the diaphragmatic function, which can affect your breathing. That's why if you've ever known anyone to break their neck, if it's below the fourth cervical nerve, they're not on a, on a ventilator. They can breathe on their own because the diaphragm is working. It's above the fourth cervical nerve. Now they have to be on a ventilator because they can't breathe on their own because the brain can't send the message to the diaphragm because the nerve has been damaged. So it's really simple. When you understand the pathway as to where things go, how easy it is to fix a lot of these problems. Not all of them but a lot of them. I tell our patients, I can't promise you anything, but I can tell you after 35 years of seeing patients, we're getting pretty good at this. So it's important that if you do come see us, you follow the treatment plan. It's only several weeks. We're not talking years for most patients, but make sure you follow our treatment plan or else you're not gonna get all the results you want. So these are, again, we're talking today about things that happen to people as you get older and the snoring and the breathing issues and the sleep apnea. Those could be from a hormone imbalance, which again, we can take supplements to help with and change your diet. Chiropractically, we can open up the nerve supply, pull the stomach away from the diaphragm, and now we get some pretty good results. Another thing that happens you get older, your sense of taste diminishes. That's not a social comment. Not that you have bad taste, your actual taste buds change. Now, we're not saying you have bad taste because it's true. Our taste buds do dull over time uh, as the taste buds start to shrink. So what can we do about that? That's why you'll notice, gosh, I always hated spicy food. Now I like it. Well, that's what's happening. The taste buds are shrinking. Whenever a cell starts to get affected, we got to look at the cellular level. What's happening on the cellular level? Why are the cells not working like they used to? In our office, one of the tests we do is we can do a micronutrient test. We can do a blood work on you and find out what specific nutrients are missing. Now, when I say micronutrients, that means not a macronutrient. The macronutrients are carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. Those are the macronutrients. Micronutrients are vitamins, minerals, uh, and that's where supplements come in so important to make sure you're getting the right nutrients along with good diet, along with proper digestion so you can absorb your nutrients. So in many cases, if we get the nervous system working again, the digestive system working, and the nutrients balanced, the cells don't, uh, aren't as damaged and don't age as quickly. So if, the, if you're starting to lose your taste, it could be several things. Let's check those three things, nervous system, digestive, digestive system, and nutrition, and let's see what we can do to get that happening. Again, it's a symptom. It's telling you that there's something wrong. Don't ignore it. Another thing that happens as you get older, you get skin conditions like eczema. They often worsen as we get aging, uh, as, as we age. Eczema, psoriasis, other issues regarding uh, rheumatological disorders start to surface in your 40s and your 50s. Whenever I see a digestive issue, I always, whenever I see a skin issue, I'm sorry, I think digestion and liver. Because your body, you eat food, it goes into the stomach, stomach breaks it down, passes it in small intestine, small intestine puts it into the blood. The blood sends it to the liver. And the liver is the clearinghouse. It's where everything's broken down and reassembled. And if the liver gets clogged up with junk, with high fructose corn syrup, with fats, with processed foods, now we have a problem. The liver can't do its job. So your body has to get rid of excess waste. We're always producing waste. So it can come out through your skin, your urine, your feces, uh, and your breath, your lungs. And so this is why if I have a patient come in and they have bad breath, it's usually one of two things. Well, assuming they just didn't eat garlic. Number one, it's a rotten tooth. Something's going on with the gums or the teeth, and it has a certain smell to it. But if somebody comes in and they have potty breath, it just smells like a toilet, that's a digestive issue 100% of the time. Because the food is essentially rotting in the colon. The gases, the rotten fecal matter, the gases then go into the blood system. The blood system exchange gases where? In the lungs. 
So the gases are then exchanged from the blood into the lungs, and then you breathe them out. So there's not a toothbrush in the world that's going to solve that problem. We need to find out why the body is eliminating improperly. Is it a digestive system? Is it the liver clogged up? And if we can get to that cause, then hopefully we can fix it. And a lot of patients, when we fix their digestive system in their liver, the skin problems go away. Now, you can treat skin issues. You can use something like extra virgin coconut oil, rub it on the skin. Works great. That's nice. You can add a little tea tree oil to it in case it's a fungal infection. It works real nice. But that's treating it from the outside in. Most of the skin problems are coming from the inside out. Same thing with acne. So if we can get the digestive system working, to take the stress off the liver, the liver can then break down and detoxify so the liver doesn't have to dump its waste products out of the body quickly. And a quick way to get it out of the system is what? The skin. And so if we can fix all these things, we're treating the cause, not the symptoms. Now, remember, all the things we're talking about are symptoms. They're not the problem. They're the symptom. Fire alarm goes off. The fire alarm isn't the problem. The problem is there's a fire. So a fire alarm going off is a symptom of a fire. When you have health issues, many times it's a symptom of something else going on. Again, a skin issue isn't the problem. What's causing the skin issue? So we can give you steroid creams and we can give you medications, and many times you need them. I'm not saying don't take them. I'm saying in addition to your medical treatment, let's try to get to the cause of the problem. It's not hard. It's easy. So it's just a thought I want you to consider. And that's why we see patients from all over the world because we get such great results. Can't help everybody, but in most cases we do. But you got to follow our treatment, by the way, too. Don't come see us and say, well, I went there one time and it didn't work. How long you had the problem? 30 years. We're not that good. I'm going to be honest with you. Okay, but we want to get the nervous system, digestive system, and the diet straightened out. You should be in pretty good shape. How about this one? Your metabolism slow down. If a person is not eating healthy consistently, their digestive process becomes effective, affected. Over time, this damage will affect the metabolism, metabolism, which is all the chemical processes in the body. They're activated by vitamins and minerals. So a person can train the metabolism to either slow down or speed up, especially with nutritional deficiencies, you can ha start having some problems. One of the things I see a major deficiency in, and all doctors do, is vitamin D. Vitamin D, we call it the sun sunshine vitamin. It's not really a vitamin. It's a hormone. Don't worry about semantics. But we used to be outside all the time. I was sitting with my friend uh, Tim Andrews the other day, and we were at a concert. And it was, the middle of, it was tw toward the end of the day, and mosquitoes were out. And he said, you remember when we were kids? Mosquitoes came out at night. You can go out all day and not have a mosquito issue. And now we have mosquitoes all the time. And I thought, I never really thought about that, but you're absolutely right. We were outside a lot more when we were kids. Never got a mosquito bite. Now at night, I grew up in New Jersey, right in the Meadowlands, swamps of Jersey, as Bruce Springsteen sings about. And at night, the mosquitoes were horrible. But now mosquitoes are out all day, every day. And one of the reasons is, Garrett, my producer, looked it up for me, is that there's an invasive type of mosquito that is multiplying. And it was, I think it was a tiger mosquito, if I remember correctly. But there's a lot more of them around. That's a problem. But the other issue is that when we start using pesticides, I did a show on this not long ago, the, the, many of the bugs start to mutate because they don't want to die. So they start to mutate and become superbugs. And I think that's what's happening with mosquitoes as well. So when we were kids, we were outside more often. And we're not out as much as we used to be as we're getting older. Because I realize that when I am out, there's mosquitoes. I don't have this problem. I'm not out as much. So you're not getting enough, enough sunlight like you used to. That can lower your vitamin D. And vitamin D is good for everything. My gosh, every time I read a new research paper on vitamin D, it's good for brain health. It's good for immune function. It's good for bone growth. So a lot of people are deficient in vitamin D. When we do our micronutrient testing at our office for you, we can, one of the things we test is vitamin D. And if you are low in it, it's the cheapest, easiest insurance policy you'll ever buy is get some vitamin D drops. It's on the website, drjoe.com. Take five a day. They have no taste. Put them in your mouth. Mix them in your food. But you got to get those vitamin, those, those vitamin D levels up. Because one of the reasons uh, our metabolism slows down, many, one of the many reasons, is that the vitamin D levels are low. And if you're eating a good diet, you can increase your, your, uh, your circulation. You can increase your metabolism. It's a lot more fun being healthy, by the way, too. And there's a lot more junk food now. That's the other thing, too. Years ago, we didn't have as much junk food as there is today. And now people eat out. How many of you eat out three times a day? Raise your hands. I know. Raise them timidly because you don't want to admit it. I went out once a year when I was a kid. My, my German grandfather took us to a German restaurant on his birthday, and we had German food at a restaurant once a year. Every other meal was homemade. 
Now, homemade is like unbelievable. If I make dinner for my friends, they're like, oh my gosh, you made this? Well, yeah, it's not hard because I grew up poor and we made every meal. I thought everybody cooked. So it's important. One of the easiest things we can do for our health is start bringing our lunches with us. Make eating more dinners at home. And lunch for me is almost always a salad. It's real simple. It's real easy. It's real cheap. I add nutritional yeast. Um, I, I add whatever I have in the refrigerator, uh, cucumbers, peppers, tomatoes, uh, lettuces, throw it in a salad. Really cheap, really easy. Uh, you'll save a ton of money because you're not going out for lunch. You'll save time as well. you save gas. You're not driving places. And you're going to feel a whole lot better. So these are just some things that you can do to slow down that aging process for yourself. Brittle bones. Bone naturally uh, starts to diminish as we age, and this can lead to something called osteopenia or osteoporosis. Osteopenia is the beginning phases of osteoporosis. It used to just be we test you, you have osteoporosis. Now we have pre-osteoporosis. You're getting there, you're not quite there yet. We have pre-hypertension, pre-diabetes. I'm not sure how I feel about these pre-diagnoses. I think it's good because we, we spot things early, but what happens is now people are dumping a lot of medication into patients when they may not need that medication. Again, I'm not against medication. I'm against unnecessary use of medication. So osteoporosis affects everyone, especially women as we age. The bones will become thinner, but they don't have to get to the point where it's dangerous. So that increases your risk of suffering from fractures. So what do we do about that? Let's talk about osteoporosis for a second. Osteoporosis, thinning of the bones. Osteopenia is the beginning of the thinning of the bones. Why do we get that? First thing people say is, I'm low in what? Say it with me, calcium. So I'm gonna take calcium supplements because that's gonna help build my bone. Now the bone is made up of mostly calcium, but it's also made up of things like vitamin D, magnesium, boron, silica. So it's like making a cake. If you bake a cake of mostly sugar and flour, not a good cake, just a cake, and you might throw some eggs in there, which of course I wouldn't eat any of this stuff, and then you put a little bit of baking soda in there. And that baking soda, without it, the cake doesn't work. Just a little bit, but it changes the whole recipe. Same thing happens with your bones. You need all the nutrients. So if you're taking vitamin C, uh, vitamin C, uh, if you're taking calcium, you're not going to get everything you need. No matter how much calcium you take, in all my years of practice, I've never, ever once run into somebody who said, Dr. Joe, I had osteoporosis, I took calcium, and now I'm normal. Ever. It never works. And yet it's still recommended to take more calcium. Does it work? Because you need everything put together. And so if that's the case, you have an issue. But let me ask you one more question then. Where did the osteoporosis come from? Yes, it's aging. I understand bones get a little thinner as we get older, but they don't have to get to the point of fractures. They come from eating a high acid diet. Now, it could be a hormone imbalance, which is rare, leading to this. But if you eat a high acid diet, if you eat things like alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, artificial sweetener, breads, cookies, cakes, donuts, pastas, you're eating a high acid diet, and these acids, when they get into the body, need to be neutralized. The body uses calcium as its primary neutralizing agent. So guess what? You're eating a high acid diet, the body has to neutralize those acids, the body takes calcium from the bones to neutralize the acid, the bones become thin. So taking calcium doesn't solve the problem, stop eating an acid diet. <gasps> Now we're getting to the cause of the problem. So when you cut out the alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, artificial sweetener, under sugar, breads, cookies, cakes, donuts, and pastas, what happens is you stop your need or your requirement for high calcium. And then if you're eating a good diet, which is fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds, you're getting more than enough calcium and vitamin D and boron and silica and everything else you need to build a bone. So you solve the problem. You stop causing it and you give the body nutrients that it needs to fix it. Sounds like a good idea to me. I think you might want to consider that. So it's not hard to fix these things once you know how to do it. Another thing that happens as you get older is patients say, well, doc, I'm clumsier. I get clumsy hands. I have difficulty writing or buttoning my shirt. This might be an early sign of what's called cervical myelopathy. It's a condition that stems from the neck and it affects the nerves in an aging population. So the brain sends messages down the spine, out the nerves to every cell in the body. So cervical myelopathy, cervical means neck, myelopathy means the muscles are not working, opathy means a, a disease or an abnormal condition, and myo means muscle. So the muscles are not working like they used to. So it comes from the discs deteriorating, pinching the nerves that affect the muscles. This is where chiropractic comes in again. You gotta keep the spine lined up your whole life, and chances are you're not gonna have that cervical myelopathy. 
So as the muscles get weaker, we can give injections to try to you know, numb the pain, but it doesn't treat the cause. What's the cause? The bones or the discs pinching the nerves that go into the hands. Another thing that comes up is people get dizzy as they get older. This is a big issue, and I teach this a lot in a lot of my classes. I teach postgraduate classes for doctors. And one of the things I teach is the risk of fall. Older people, what's one of their biggest fears? Fire, they can't get out of the house fast enough, and having a fall. And I was talking to somebody just the other day, somebody I knew from high school, and they found me on the internet, and they were talking, oh my gosh, you're Dr. Joe, this is amazing, I can't believe what you've done, you've changed healthcare around the world, everybody up in New Jersey is talking about you, they watch your shows, oh my gosh, this is great. And what happened to your mom, what happened to your dad, we're talking about our families, because again, we all grew up together. And her father fell, broke his hip, and died not long after. So the balance issue is a problem. One of the reasons we have balance issues, it's either the inner ear or the cerebellum. The cerebellum is the back part of your brain. So if the cerebellum is not getting the proper neurological input or circulation, it's gonna be affected. If the cerebellum is being affected, you can actually start to fall to one side. So a test I teach my doctors, and I teach this in my postgraduate classes, is I have a patient stand up, put their feet together, close their eyes, and I put my arms around them in case they're gonna fall, and see if they fall to one side. If they start to fall to one side, that's the side of the cerebellum I need to stimulate. So we can adjust chiropractic adjustments on that side of the body alone. Because when you adjust someone, you send a neurological impulse up into that side of the cerebellum, and in many cases, they start to restore some of their balance. Now, it's not a one-shot deal, and there could be an inner ear problem too, so we gotta check that. But when we stimulate the cerebellum, we can, uh, amazing what happens with muscle control. And people that have shakiness and weak hands, we start doing this and they're like, oh my gosh, this is amazing, Dr. Joe. Why didn't somebody tell me about this sooner? Biggest complaint I get, why didn't I do this sooner? Another issue as we get older, gosh, we're running out of time. We're gonna have to do a second show on this one. We got way too much stuff to cover. Your loss of energy, how many people get tired all the time? Everyone suffers signs of aging eventually, it's, it's okay. But what people don't realize is how many of these symptoms are due to hormone decline, which in turn leads to other issues and a decline in health and quality of life. So the hormones are so important. They're the things that make everything work. They're the, the, the orchestra conductor. So both men and women can experience energy loss with hormone changes. Now, unfortunately, lack of energy can set off a number of negative chain reactions. Poor performance in the gym, poor performance in the bedroom, lack of effectiveness at work or school, depression, just the inability to do things you love doing. And it can make it hard to continue to pursue these activities that you've enjoyed your whole life and maintain progress and motivation when you're at work and you're at play. So one of the reasons that happens is your body is not digesting food like it used to. As we get older, our digestive enzyme levels drop. And so what I recommend is everyone, your whole life, this is a good rule to follow, have something raw at every meal. Now when I say raw, broccoli, cucumbers, tomatoes, avocado, salad, raw food has in it something called enzymes. Enzymes are destroyed at above 110 degrees. So if you cook a carrot at 110 degrees or more, you're gonna destroy the enzymes. If you eat it raw, the enzymes are there. My rule, one of, the reasons, one of the things I do to stay young is I'll take digestive enzymes whenever I have a cooked meal. So when I have a cooked meal, I take Dr. Joe's digestive support, it's on the website, drjoe.com, and it helps me digest my food. Now I usually have something raw at every meal. But if I go out to dinner, if I go out for Indian food, if I go out for uh, Asian food, everything is cooked, I take my digestive enzymes. Amazing. What a change it makes. And enzymes have two functions. One, you can take it with food, they digest the food. Take it on an empty stomach, the enzymes get absorbed into your blood system and help fight inflammation and other diseases. And that's a, I guess we'll have to do a whole lecture on enzymes actually, that's a pretty important topic. And the other thing you wanna look at is your adrenal glands. The adrenal glands become weaker as you get older. And so bags under the eyes, tired all the time, you're under stress, men mental, chemical, and physical stress. We talked about that in the first half hour. You can take Dr. Joe's adrenal support, which I take every day, by the way, because the adrenal glands help with energy, they help with hormone levels, and they help with inflammation. So digestive enzymes and adrenal support is really important, along with water. And the minimum supplements are what? Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. That's how I get a lot of my energy. It's probably going to work for you, too. So those are all on the website, drjoe.com. And folks... Stop suffering. We talked about a lot of things, we've got a lot more to cover. If you wanna make an appointment to come see us, stop waiting. Don't be one of these patients. I've been listening to you for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, I've read all your books. Oh my gosh, you're an amazing thing in the world. But now I finally made an appointment. Just do it now and stop suffering needlessly. I hope you're not gonna regret that decision by coming to see us. 
So go to my website, drjoe.com. You can book right online. In the Atlanta area, we have offices in Marietta, Duluth, and Stockbridge. We're hopefully going to open up in West Cobb very soon. We want to be your doctors. We want to get you well and keep you well. So if you have neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, acid reflux, uh, you ever been in a car accident, ever, if the car was damaged, you were damaged. Stop suffering and make the appointment now. We work with most major medical insurance companies, car accidents, sports injuries, workers' comp. We're going to make it really easy for you to get well and stay well. So the website again, 24 hours a day, drjoe.com. I'm Dr. Joe Esposito. Tell your friends about the show. We'll catch you next time. Thanks for listening to For the Health Fit. Remember to subscribe to this podcast, and I'll help you naturally get well and stay well. You can also listen to and call into my radio show live Sunday evenings from 7 to 9 Eastern Time on WSBRadio.com and on the WSB Radio app.